New York, America's most dynamic city, draws in millions of visitors every year. Travelers from all over the globe touch down here at New York's international gateway, John F. Kennedy Airport. Now, after decades of decline, the aging JFK is going through a massive rebuilding program. They're struggling to construct what will be the world's busiest air terminal in record time. Right there! But first, they must clean up a legacy of toxic waste, build on a low-lying site prone to flooding, work around this 50-year-old architectural icon without stopping one of America's most important airports dead in its tracks. This is sitting idle. JetBlue Airways started in 2000 with just one gate here at Terminal 6 JFK. Their operation has grown so rapidly that they now use every one of the 14 gates. But this low-cost airline just keeps growing, and now they need to build the world's busiest terminal. Rich Smythe is running the project for JetBlue. New routes are being added monthly, and the airline's fleet is expanding rapidly. The company's whole strategy depends on getting this building open for business by autumn 2008. Overall timing is, is based on the delivery of this terminal, so it's very much not only would like to have it, but we really need to have this completed on time. JetBlue's operation is based on high-speed turnarounds. Architect Bill Hooper has designed a new kind of terminal, fast, lean, and super efficient. It's only 640,000 square feet and it's only 26 gates, but it's gonna outperform literally any terminal in the world, and in many cases, almost entire airports. The building has to handle 20 million passengers a year. Bill's challenge is to speed up passenger flows through the terminal and the movement of planes at the gates. Most of JetBlue's customers already book online. Checking in will be heavily automated. Meanwhile, JetBlue's fleet of narrow-body jets should ensure maximum efficiency. It only flies two types of aircraft. You don't have to allow for the wide flexibility that some airports and some terminals do have to accommodate. We could be able to, to distill this terminal down to its real essence. There's not an ounce of fat in this building. Bill Hooper claims his Terminal 5 is the first in a new generation of terminals but he's had to design around JFK's most important historic building. The magnificent 1962 TWA terminal stands at the front of the site. This design icon has been granted preservation status. JetBlue have had to incorporate it within their overall plan. Claude Whitehack, Project Super, has to make the plan work. He's got to build the world's busiest terminal and work around a national monument. It's going to make a tough job even tougher. I'd have a lot more footprint to work in. As you can see, I get restricted and restricted. I wouldn't have to worry about the tubes, and I wouldn't have to worry about services, so it'd be a lot easier for me. But there's going to be nothing easy about this job. Balls that. Watch that ball is going to come out. The TWA terminal is staying, but there's still masses of rubble and old runway to rip up and clear. JFK is built on the marshland of Jamaica Bay. The ground is soft, sandy, and prone to flooding. I got watered that deep over there. They're having to drive in 127,000 deep piles to support the tons of steel, concrete, and glass that will make up this new super terminal. As the construction teams dig down, they're uncovering a hidden network of 50-year-old fuel lines, asbestos-coated ducts, and stinking pools of toxic waste. Oh, dear God. Claude Whitehack is under intense pressure. JetBlue's success depends on opening the world's busiest terminal in autumn 2008. This is sitting idle. What are we doing to shake the tree on this? 
JetBlue Airways is banking its future on building the world's busiest air terminal here at JFK International, New York. Project Super Claude Whitehack is under relentless pressure to get the building open by autumn 2008. After months of clearing the site, the steel workers go into action on the first flight wing. Beautiful day, everybody's out, we're working. As you can see, there, we're putting up steel at this moment. Foreman Kevin Zinzer is in charge of the steel erection. That one right there! Yeah, that one, yeah. Kevin's got steel in his bones. Well, I'm a fourth generation Iowa worker. After I was asked to leave my last college, they... <laughs> I asked my father for a job, and he got me one. I've been doing it ever since, for uh, 25 years now. I wouldn't do anything else. I love doing it. The new terminal is low-rise to stop it towering over the TWA building. But snapping the steel together is no less hazardous here than at the top of a Manhattan skyscraper. I worked 60, 80 stories. I worked on top of the Trade Center. Once you're over a couple of floors, it's really irrelevant to heights. It really doesn't make much of a difference. Whatever the height, these guys must stay focused at all times. There's a lot of trust involved. You can sometimes you trust somebody in there and they will screw up. Anything could happen at any time. Kevin's steel team are building the world's most up-to-date terminal. But ironically, the gateway to the new T5 will be a design icon from the early 1960s. The former TWA terminal is probably the most famous building in aviation history. JetBlue plans to use this legendary building as a spectacular entrance to their new terminal. They want to give their passengers a taste of the glamour and excitement of flight in the 50s and 60s. Back then, international air travel cost a small fortune. It was the preserve of the rich and famous, the so-called jet set. The TWA terminal offered style and luxury to a limited number of passengers. By the late 60s, the introduction of wide-bodied jets like the Jumbo 747 heralded the age of mass air travel. This building just couldn't cope with the growing volume of traffic. In the end, TWA went bust and the building was abandoned. JetBlue reckons giving their passengers a taste of the golden age of air travel simply makes good business sense. We feel that we're bringing some of that back to our customers uh, to, to give the, them that sense of the feel that they, they are special the way they felt back in 1962. We think uh, we provide that today and this is going to help us do that as well. The original terminal and flight tubes are staying, but the rest of the former TWA site must be bulldozed and cleared. The old concrete runway is now being ripped up, and thousands of metal piles are being driven in to support the steel framework of the building. But the intense hammering has disturbed the soft, sandy ground, and a noxious substance has come bubbling up. It's brought work shuddering to a standstill. Project Super Claude's used to it. He's dealing with some of the most polluted real estate in North America. 